And welcome back. It's been a while. It's been a very long time. In fact, it's been almost two months um, of a break from uh, content, but we are back and for a big one. Uh, here with me, Matun Ramesh, contributor to Real Splash Brothers. Matun, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? And we have Olympic trials starting up just this weekend. And we need to get through some of our own predictions. Um, we did a video for state uh, that was going through the predictions. Or actually, we did it for regionals. And we literally forgot to record. It was a terrible moment. <laughs> um, so this is our first real video. We're going to go through it, try to hit some of the, uh, the key points of going through the races. Um, I'm super excited uh, for the meet. Lots of good races. So I guess the first race we have, and we were setting up notes and I randomly, I've just put the 400 IM first because that's like the first event, uh, but we'll go IM and then go through uh, the rest of the events in order, starting with the women. So um, 400 IM, the world record is 426, Katina Hozu. Um, right now, Margalis is the only U.S. swimmer to hit below uh, 435 since 2019 and sits well above the field. Um, the American record is only 431, Katie Hoff. Um, I think that record's within reach. Um, ultimately, I had Brooke Ford getting second and Emma Wendt, I think I'm saying that right, in third. Um, Emma won U.S. Nationals at just 17. Um, unfortunately, if you look at some of her best times, she dropped a ton in short course, 407 to 404. Um, but she did that at a virtual championship meet. And the 2019 championships had a weaker field due to Worlds. So there is some question to her ability to um, go on the big stage. Um, what do you think about this event? Well, I have to agree with you. I have uh, Margalis, Ford, and Wayant. Wayant, I don't know how to say it. You're probably okay. close enough. Yeah, good enough. But I, 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 was, I was a little questionable about where to put the second two, but I got Wan, um, just, she just hasn't swam any real competition, didn't swim college this year. I don't know how she'll handle the pressure of having to perform at a meet like trials because she just had easy wins for like her past couple years. So we'll No, see. I, I agree and uh, Brooke Ford, is has been there she's about 23 24 years old now um and melanie margalis has been there she's a, a veteran in the event and she's unbelievable uh potential for the american record to go down there um second event 200 im you want to take this one? Oh yeah same thing we have um melanie margalis at the top but this two and two and three spots are different so i got madison cox coming second and alex walsh coming third so both of them have like plenty of it. Uh, Margalis and Cox have plenty of experience. I don't, I don't doubt they won't like show up and perform. Um, it, it depends on the newcomer Walsh, right? So you have, um, um, you have Walsh really young and she just, I just don't see her experience. Like, it, I, don't, I don't think it's gonna be very good going into the race because you have to race like, um, you have to race Margalis and Cox, who are like super good at experience. I think if it comes down to the end, Cox is going to outtouch Walsh. And she's going to make it. Yeah, and um, you bring up the experience. Melanie Margalis, um, as we just talked about, one of the more um, strengthened 400 IMers and 200 IMers in the country. And Madison Cox was there in 2016. Uh, UT vet, she's absolutely amazing, has done this race over and over again and on the big stages. Um, but honestly, looking at the field, uh, I mean, Alex Walsh had an unbelievable short course season. She won NCAAs. Um, and you have, um, you have Douglas setting uh, down there, I think in fifth, and, or fifth or sixth, and she had the fastest time short course 150.9 so it, it's going to be interesting to see how those two do and i just have a feeling watching alex walsh i just have a feeling she's going to break something break into the top two i have her second that's a stretch she's sitting at 2090 already and that's a time from 2019 i think that she's within reasonable striking distance 
They're veterans. Um, but I'm going to take the uncommon round and say Walsh takes second. Uh, just something about that breaststroke fly kick she's got. Um, <laughs> got me thinking she's going to do something crazy at trials. We'll see it. Um, I think it's going to be an excellent race either way. And speaking of uh, excellent races, we have a kind of unexpected excellent race, the 50 free. Um, you know, when I was, uh, here's a little story. I want to... I like to tell this. When I was 11 years old, I was super into basketball, uh, much more than swimming, uh, and especially SMU basketball. Uh, that's where my parents went. And there was a guy on the team in 2013, right when I, when I got into it, uh, named Ryan Manuel. And he was a record holder for the most free throws in a season by an SMU player. They were ranked top 25. They went to the NCAA tournament. Um, and I ended up watching 2016 trials uh, and I watched his sister win an event and go to the Olympics. And his sister is Simone Manuel. Uh, pretty crazy. Obviously, now we know her as not just the sister of Ryan Manuel, a college basketball player, but we know her as Olympic gold medalist and world rec or American record holder, Simone Manuel. And I think she's going to take this race. Um, she's sitting at 23.97, the only American under 24. But the reason why this race is particularly amazing is Claire Curzon, the 16-year-old, sitting at 24-1-7 at just 16 years old. Um, other than Manuel, who has done it, I think, like eight or nine times, she's the only American swimmer to go under 24-4 since 2018. And Tori Huss sits outside at just 24-4 as well. But she's a solid three-tenths behind Curzon. Um, Douglas and Abby Weidzel have been the two fastest 50 freestylers at the NCAA level um, the past two years. And Weitzel is the only one to go under 21 ever in the history. Um, but I'm going to say she takes third just outside of that top two spot over the 18-year-old Husk and Douglas. That's Abby Weidzel um, because of how well she's done recently. But Tori Husk, uh, also an unbelievable youngster. Lots of potential in this race. Yeah, and of course, we'll talk about Tori Husk more later on. But for for me, I have Simone Manuel, Claire Curzon, Abby Weitzel also. But if you look at last uh, last trials, you had uh, Abby Weitzel win and Simone Manuel come second in this event. I don't think Simone has any room to slip up like she did last time. If she comes second, I mean, it's going to be... If she comes like second or third, it, it's not going to look good for her because she is the American record holder. Although I, I think she'll be fine with more experience on her back now, especially at Worlds and other big meets like that. I think she'll be fine. I think uh, Claire Curzon is going to give her a scare. And I think that I'm, I'm going to pick a bold prediction here and say both of them go under 24. <laughs> I got them I got them at 23 nines both. Nine line low and nine high, and I got Abby Weitzel at twenty four one, improving from her performance last trial. Uh, that would be absolutely insane, and you know, interesting enough, I think this race could be reminis uh, reminiscent of the fifty breaststroke at two thousand nineteen Worlds when Lily King was scared um, by what is it, Benit. Polite, you know what I you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, I know who you mean. Who now is the world record holder in the 50 breast. But back then that was so crazy. 29.9. Wow, she did it. You know, she was right on Lily King. And who knows? Now um that girl is the world record holder in the event, only about 17, maybe 18 years old. I think Claire Curzan could do that. I think she could be 20. 23 6 23 7 in the next two years oh yeah it's gonna be in incredible. the next in the next couple of years maybe i don't have her as of right now although she no. could surprise us both because she's hey, been doing that all year there's there's lots of room to improve and as we know we'll talk about her in a second she has been improving and this is not her only event she's got multiple uh chances to make the olympic team uh so moving forward in the 100 free this one you know obviously we have to do with the relay an individual, I have Simone Manuel first. Again, um, what is your take on this race, Matun? Um, this race is all Simone Manuel. She has over over a second on the field just going into the meet. Um, she'll have an easy win. Um, Mallory Comerford, she's been the only American under 53 since in the past like three years, I think. Um, yep. White Soul, 
I mean, she's been she's been around 53 a couple times. She's never really broken it. I see her as going another 53, but 53-0, and then she'll make it third for a relay spot. Tori Husk, here, here's here's her name again. Um, she's gonna come up big. I have her, her and Claire Curzon are gonna battle it out a lot this meet. Um, I actually have for fourth, fifth, and sixth, uh, Husk, Curzon, and Walsh, all three youngsters. Um, Walsh is a bit behind in like the seating, but I think she she's been like under underrated the past like year. I think she's gonna come in super hot, wanting to not be ignored as a fast youngster, and she's gonna drop like I'm guessing a 53-4 gets sixth. Uh, Curzon is gonna drop about two tenths from her time, 53-2, and I think Husk is gonna be right there, and then Husk kind of touches Curzon for fourth in that really spot. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think Husk and Curzon honestly are pretty interchangeable. They've raced uh, a bunch. Uh, Claire Curzon was uh, fifty three four six at a a attack Titans meet uh, in May, and she won that by over four seconds. And then Tori Husk, her best time is from another attack meet where she won up Curzan, knocked down the 53-4, and Curzan was only 54-4. So they've raced against each other a ton. Um, I think that you can tell from the competition level that the, the meet in April where Curzan went her time was a little bit better, but they're so close. I think it's um, both of them will show up big, um, but I'm going to give the edge to Curzan. I really trust Curzan in this situation, uh, but either can make it realistically. Um, I don't think they'll... Touch Comerford, but I think the relays are possible, and um, it's going to be an incredible race for sure. Okay. And uh, the next race is also interesting. Back to Simone Manuel, but this time you add in Katie Ledecky, the 200 freestyle. Um, you know, Katie Ledecky tied Allison Smith's U.S. Open record this season with a 154 four, and she's sitting over a second and a half ahead of the field. She's got a solid road to the victory. Um, another big player is Allison Smith. She's 31, um, but I just don't think she's going to uh, give a run at Simone Manuel. Uh, we just talked about how fast Simone Manuel is at 50 and 100, and she has it in the 200 as well. Um, they have nearly identical entry times between Manuel and Schmidt, but I think that uh, Manuel will stay ahead. She's still young. And McLaughlin and the 157 field, I think they both those two will go three and four. Um, Gabby DeLoof, I have fifth. And Melanie Margalis, I have sixth. Um, it's such a tight field. Um, you know, we'll see. Gabby DeLoof was 156, uh, 5 5 at 2018 Summer Nationals, but she has not gone under 59, uh, 159 since. Um, so inconsistent, but she could go, you know, if she can go 156, she could probably push into the top four. Yeah. Um, well, see, we're, we're, we got the same top three, but I'm a bit different on you for <laughs> four through six. I have Smaliga, McLaughlin, and Smith coming in four through six. And here's why. So basically, I mean, if you look at Smaliga, she just put up her time this year just decided to swim it, you know, and I feel like it's just another event where you, like, just kind of have fun with it, but then you get good at it, and you're like, well, might as well start <laughs> swimming it a lot now, you know, and I think uh, Smaliga is, I think the two free is that event for Smaliga. She's just going to have fun with it. Um, I think she has a lot of potential to still drop in this event as she keeps learning how to swim it better and better. Um, I got Katie McLaughlin. I mean, I mean, thinking about McLaughlin and Duluth, they've been 156 mid before, um, but it's been like a couple of years since either of them have hit the time, especially Duluth. I mean, they have the capability, but Duluth has been out of the 157 range since 2019, while McLaughlin has been around that times recently. That's why I put, um, that's why I have McLaughlin in the top six while I put Leo Smith over Duluth. I just don't trust her, uh, Duluth's inconsistency. Yeah, no, I, I think you have a, a great train of thought there. Um, it's always interesting to see, you know, the top level swimmers, they don't go times for years and then they'll show up big. So trials is gonna be a good um, opportunity to see 
how they do there, especially Gabby Galoof. Um, going to be interesting to see that race. Um, on to the 400 free. Uh, I think the number one pick in these next three races is pretty set. Um, but who do you have in two and three? Okay, so the 400 free, I have uh, Katie Ledecky, of course, right? And then I have Leah Smith and Emma Norton. I think Katie Ledecky and Leah Smith are cut above the rest of the field. Their times are just just way about way up there. Um, I don't see anyone else challenging them. Um, um, I expect uh, Ledecky to be under four easily. Um, Smith has been oh Smith so many times has been so close to breaking that four minute barrier. Um, I like last Olympic trial she was like a four double O. Um, I think this year will be her year, and I think she dips under four finally, goes uh, 359 high, and then with the absence of Alison Schmidt in this event, I, I just don't see anyone that could contend for top two. That's why I have, um, I was debating over Emma Norton, right, and uh, me, me, it's my, Mites. yeah, 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 um, I mean, the thing is, they went, um, when, when Norton went her 404, she out-touched um, Leah Smith to do it. And I just, yeah, I just don't think um, she'll be in the competition for second when Leah Smith is tapered and all that. So I have her as third. No, I agree. Katie Ledecky, um, obviously well ahead of the field, the world record holder in that event. And Leah Smith, um, been at that 4-0 range uh, many, many times. I think she's pretty much set. Uh, and Eva Norton, um, I, I, I just don't think there's any way anyone else is going to get in that top two. Um, but Norton could be uh, interesting in terms of how fast she goes. I think she could dip pretty close to a 403, 402 range. Um, but we'll see. Um, and in the 800 free, very similar story. Um, Ledecky and Smith are so far ahead. Uh, but it is a tight, it is a tight field between three and 13. And and I agree with um, what you had in your notes, actually. Allie McHugh, I think, is solid for the third place. Uh, Ledecky and Smith are pretty much set for the team here. But uh, McHugh has been 825 pretty consistently. Um, she was able to go 826 just around um, earlier this year. Um, I think the consistency is going to pay off. Uh, oh, especially yeah. in that type. I mean, she's been consistent the past couple of years. The only year where she had a drop was her COVID-19 year. And I mean, that, I mean, I don't really it count Makes sense. That. Like, yeah, I mean, most people didn't swim meets. I don't think she swam a 2020 meet, actually. I yeah. think her 2020 year ended in 2019. But she was able to go right back to 826 earlier this year. I'm assuming she wasn't like fully tapered or anything. So I think she'll be able to drop time. I have her, especially with the field being so tight, I have her dropping like six seconds from her entry time. So yeah. I have her at an 820 right now. Oh no, and it's totally possible for that to happen, especially in this event. It's, it, there's been so many best times and we'll see it in the men in the last couple months. Um, it's going to be kind of crazy to see how people can drop. I mean, these guys are, and, and men and women are going best times just months outside of trials. Um, so we'll see if they're able to drop a lot of time, but definitely potential there. Um, and we're going to have to do the same thing in the 1500, Kate Ledecky. We don't even need to talk about her in this event. She's going to win. No. She's unstoppable in this. Um, but only five seconds separate fourth through second in seating. And I'll pick based on experience and age. Ashley Twitchell is 30 versus Sullivan, who's only 19 going into this meet. Uh, Sullivan is five seconds faster than McHugh and six seconds ahead of Leah Smith. Um, I think Sullivan actually has a lot of potential to drop where I don't see Leah Smith necessarily going crazy and dropping 10 seconds. Um, McHugh's time is from this year where Smith has not hit her time since 2018. Um, so I'm going to have, uh, Sullivan getting that second spot, Allie McHugh going third just outside, but it's going to be a tough race. And, and Leah Smith, of course, has been there so many times. Um, definitely the potential for her to move into the top two, potentially, if she wants to, uh, take down Sullivan. It's, it's not a huge jump in time there. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, Erica Sullivan has experience in this event. I mean, more and more coaches are like persu- uh, are like encouraging their young uh, female distance girls to start swimming the 1500 more rather than just the 800. And I think that's really gonna pay off for Sullivan here. And I have her, I have her above Twitchell, who's seated above her because of Twitchell's old age. I mean, she's in her 30s. It's not like that's, it's not like it's impossible to swim in your 30s. It's just, it's, it's a long race. Yeah. And it's not, it's not going to be as easy to get into that shape at that age, you know. So I, I don't, I don't have her in the top three. I have Ali McHugh. Um, I, I thought about Leah Smith. Um, she just. I mean, she just hasn't put up a time in this event in like the past three years. I just think her inexperience is in swimming this distance is going to come down. And yeah, I got McHugh taking it. Yeah, no, and I think Sullivan, being as young as she is, um, has a lot of time to drop. Oh. And we're going to switch it up here, going to the hundred back. Um, Reagan Smith, the world record holder in this event. Um, again, I think she's really a lock. Um, you have a really tight field. Rand White, who's currently fourth, win her best short course time at SEC's 2020, um, and her best long course time recently at a Georgia meet. Um, while she was second at NCAAs this year, she added from her best. In fact, um, she's added every uh, time she swam the 100 back. That's all three years of her college experience from SECs to NCAAs. Now, honestly, that is somewhat common for those mid-tier SEC swimmers. Sometimes not the very top, but the ones just below. They tend to add because of how competitive the conference is. But um, Smoliga is absolutely proven. Um, And with Baker's inexplicit ankle, metatarsal injury, whatever she got going on, um, I don't think she's going to be at 100%. Um, she says it hasn't affected her training, but as someone who's experienced multiple breakages in the foot and a current ankle sprain, I, I don't think there's any way it doesn't hurt at all. So I have Smoliga getting second behind Smith, and then I have um, Amy Bilquist getting third just outside of that top two. Oh, yeah. I, I have Smith and Smoliga coming in the top two. I mean, I think they're pretty safe picks. Um, with Baker being injured, I, yeah, I just don't think it, uh, it's going to happen. Um, I mean, my policy is if it hurts bad enough where you can mention it, especially to the media, then it's not going <laughs> to be that easy to recover from. Yeah. Uh, I have I have Phoebe Bacon coming at third. I think... I, I have her third beat. She's been consistently dropping over the past three years. She's still young and has a lot of potential. I take her over anyone else, like from like third down right now. So I mean, what I mean, you're probably you're probably thinking, well, what about Curzon? She's also young and also been 58. But I mean, I, I feel like she was a little more rested than Bacon was when she went her like 59 low this year. So I think I think Bacon's gonna put up a great swim here. She's gonna go 58 low, and she's gonna get in the third spot. And you know, think about it, right? In 2016, 59 made the Olympics. Yeah, it's incredible. It's a lot different it's, this year. It's insane, and and you can realistically say that probably the top three finishers in this event, similar to how the men have been recently, um, are potential gold medalists. It's unbelievable how deep the hundred back is this year. And especially not just at the top with veterans, but young people um, like Phoebe Bacon and Claire Curzon and even Reagan Smith, who's only, I think, 18 now. She's still young, maybe 19. So it's it's absolutely incredible. And in the 200 back, I think it's a similar story. Um, Baker, again, despite being 206-1 at 2018 Nationals, is questionable, especially in this distance. If she can manage to pull together in 100 back, um, the pain's going to be a lot worse in a 200 back. Uh, Phoebe Bacon and Ryan White both went best times this past offseason. Um, but given how well Bacon did in NCAAs, um, dropping three seconds off her best and um, going uh, 148, actually, I think it was two off her best, three off of what she went at conference. Um, I think the rising sophomore will edge out Ryan and get second. So I have Reagan Smith and then Phoebe Bacon making the team and Ryan uh, Ryan White um, 
in third. Oh yeah, I don't think anyone's like pushing Reagan Smith out of this event. Um, um, I I think yeah, like I said before in the hundred bag, Bacon has improved like so much over the past year, especially in the two hundred. Um, she's actually coming in with the fastest time of the year. And like I said before, I don't think she was rested that much for her pro meet at Indy. I'd expect her a big drop. Um, and I think she'll get down into the 204 range. Um, I mean, why, why has shown she can perform big at NCAAs at, well, at the NCAA level, not the meet itself, but I think she'll barely edge out for the rest of the field and make it a really fun race to watch with her finishing third. Yeah, it's going to be a, a great race. And um, moving forward um, to our last four events, the 100 breaststroke, um, you want to you wanna go ahead and take this one? Oh, yeah. She is no doubt going to the first race. Um, <laughs> Lily King. Her, her, her last name is Lily King. Lily King. I mean, I mean, if she was a dude, yeah, <laughs> that the last name would fit perfectly. <laughs> but I mean, she's still the king, queen, whatever. Um, I mean, uh, looking at the second and third spot, I have Annie Lazor and uh, Lydia Jacoby. Um, Lazor has shown she can beat King head to head, which is an impressive feat itself. Even if the race was the 200 breast. Um, mm. She'll be coming to the race really hot, looking for her Olympic berth. Um, she's born, performed very consistently, even after taking a break from swim after 2016. I think she's going to come in red hot, looking for that um, Olympic. She, she has that like cool spirit that all those people that really want to make the Olympics have. And she's going to try her very best. And I think she's going to make it this year. Um, Jacoby's young, and if you look at the 100 breast depth, many of the swimmers are in their mid 20s, and Jacoby's like 17, I think. She's going to have to face all these like more experienced swimmers, like Molly Hannes. I mean, I personally don't like the way Molly Hannes swims, but I mean, I think as a young swimmer, she'll be able to drop big, uh, pass up all these experienced people, and then come third. What what do you have against Molly Hannison? Is it the stroke uh, yeah, or I think her pullouts are weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I honestly have not watched enough Molly Hannis uh tape, but I do remember her pullouts looking a little bit wonky. Um it's it's Lily King's race to lose, honestly. And Annie Lazar, um, you know, she's coming off of basically a, a, a whole retirement for like two years. Um, so I think she's going to be hungry. I think she's going to take second for sure. And in the 200 breast, um, really Lily King, you know, used to talk about her being the king. She does not have the best track record in the 200 breast. She was faded in multiple races, including the 2019 U.S. Open meet where she was second and an abysmal performance at 2018 nationals where she was fifth. Um, she has done a lot better short course, uh, yards and meters. And um, with Lazar's best of 220.77 uh, coming after her time off, I think she's the favorite going into this race. Um, uh, Gallet, an AM swimmer, 21 8 um, from 2019 Pan Ams. Um, I think she's looking good for third. Um, you know, as, uh, I think it's Escobedo. Uh, she upset King at 2018 or, or 2019 U.S. Open, uh, breaking the open record. But I think Gal will edge her out just with the better time, um, and King will show up just enough to make it. But it would honestly not surprise me if King faded the last 50 and got out touched. Um, but what do you have to think about this? Well, I mean. I mean, you've mentioned Lily King being so much better at short course, yards and meters. And as ma as amazing as King's breaststroke is, I mean, she only has half the pullouts now. And yeah. I don't expect her to dominate as she usually does without those. She tends to run out of gas the more she swims. Um, something, it won't really sit well in this kind of, in, in this stage where everything's just, you gotta make the Olympics or you don't make the Olympics. And I think that's gonna give Lazor the push to come in first, especially since she's so hungry for this Olympic, um, just her turn to make the Olympics. She's so hungry for it. 
I think she'll like pass um, King in the last 50 and win the win the race. Um, she's put up a uh, very solid performances since her break. And um, I mean, in, in terms of Escobedo and Galat, um, Galat, I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, she's yeah, been like she's been faster than Escobedo, but Escobedo has been more consistent, putting up better times. But this isn't about consistency always. This is the big stage, and I think Bethany Galat is gonna get it. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, obviously from Texas, we've seen Bethany Gallat um, a lot um, race many times. I've seen her at some smaller meets, and she's absolutely unbelievable. Um, and I'll, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt, but I don't think she's going to be good enough to touch Lazur or King. But would not surprise me if King collapsed kind of in this stage. But um, given King's mentality, I know she's huge racer i don't know if she'll give it up not gonna, she's not gonna give up i don't think she's gonna give up even if she's dying so it'll be interesting oh, yeah. to see so our final two races are the fly events uh so let's get through these um 100 fly claire curzon unbelievable we said we'd talk about her again here's her big race she won us open just this past year with a 56-6 right after that was actually right um before I, or yeah it was right before i interviewed her um back in november and now she just one up herself and went 56 2 oh um just a couple months ago and uh tori husk upset uh dahlia in 2019 talking about her a bunch um that was in the u.s open and uh broke her own 15 16 nag and took down the meat record um, you know, that was the year prior. Both Curzon and Husk have what it takes to beat Dahlia and punch their ticket to Tokyo. But I'll trust Curzon on this one, who has just been a little bit ahead of Husk this season. But I think Dahlia is going to get third, and she's been the face of U.S. Women's Fly for the past I mean, five, four or five years, really, even going back to 2016. So um, I think this is the youngsters' race. Um, Dahlia does have that. She does have the the um, competition history, and she does have the the I guess the um, the wear and tear. She's done it, um, but I think Curzon and Husk are very hot, and I think they can take this race, especially Curzon taking that first spot. Oh yeah, um, I think this event is going to show the world that American swimming is all set for the next like decade. <laughs> um, you have uh, Curzan and Husk. Over the past couple of years, they've been consistently putting up super fast times in this event, breaking all kinds of records. Dahlia, I mean, she, you've mentioned she's been the face of American Butterfly for the past couple of years. I think she's going to be dethroned by these two youngsters. Um, youngsters? <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, they have beat her head to head before. Um, and I, all they gotta do now is just do it again. I think Curzon's, like you said, is gonna just out-touch us for the first place spot. Yeah, no, and I, I agree with you. And in, interestingly enough, the 200 fly is a much different group of people. Um, who do you have in this race, the final race of our uh, women's preview? All right, I got uh, Haley Flickinger first. Um, I got Katie Draybaugh and Reagan Smith coming two and three. Um, I mean, over the past three years, the top three butterflyers in the country have just switched off between these three. Uh, Flickinger has been dominating much longer than that. Um, Draybaugh has con continuously finished ahead of Smith in the rankings, except for the 2020 swim year, where she wasn't able to swim the event after December. Um, Smith was able to do that, but she's back ahead of Smith this year. Oh, well, not really. She hasn't really swam this year either. Uh, Smith is ahead this year, but I mean, she, we've been waiting for this meet in this moment. I think Katie Draybaugh, like the past couple of years, is going to show up ahead of Reagan Smith again, out touch her, whatever. Um, she's going to come in second and make the Olympic team. Yeah, and, and Draybaugh has been the only um, other U.S. swimmer who's been under 207 the last three years, including um Flickner and Smith um this is Flickner's bread and butter race um Reagan Smith obviously has that amazing 200 back amazing 100 back um but this is kind of 
a reach event for her. She's great short course, um, but long course, I think this is her time to establish herself as a true leader in this event on the US and international stage. I think she's gonna get second. Katie Drabat just, I think it's gonna be such a close race. I mean, even, even between uh, one, two and three, but I, I, I'm gonna give Smith the edge. Um, I think she's gonna come in and tear it up, but there is the potential, you know, her main events are the 100 and 200 back where she really is more guaranteed a spot. So maybe she doesn't 100% taper um, because she's guaranteed those places, which would be disappointing. I hope that she has enough in her to, to go crazy in this 200 fly, but uh, it depends on how she rests and what her focusers are on. And I think uh, that about wraps it up for the 200 fly and our women's preview. Anything else for our from a tune? No, I'm good. That pretty much wraps it up for me. Yeah, and really quick, I guess I'll ask, um, what is your, just a quick question, what is the race that you are most excited about? Oh, that's, that's a tough question. Hey, make it, um, make it fast. It's a quick, it's a rapid fire. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm gonna go with something that nobody would actually care about and say the 800. Uh, really, the 800? 800. Not, not the first two spots, but I wanna see what like three through eight looks like in the finals. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Um, I, I, I really want to see um, who comes out there. And Alan Q, obviously, we talked about how great she is, but yeah, that's an unbelievable race. Um, and of course, any race with Katie Ledecky is always gonna be yeah, exciting. Hopefully, the camera, Katie Ledecky, isn't too far ahead that the camera's actually on <laughs> through six. Yeah, because usually it's uh, unfortunately she's on a whole other level. Um, I'm gonna say. The race I'm most looking forward to is the Tuna Breast. Uh, as myself, a Tuna Breast Joker, I love this race. I love it long course. And uh, personally, uh, Lily King is always fun to watch. She's a sprinter. She likes to go out fast. And I, I just want to see something crazy here. I want to see Annie Lazar. I want to see her beat Lily King. Um, I just want to see it because she had that break off. Take down the king. I want her rise to fame here. I don't know if it's going to happen in the 100 breasts. If it does, then that's the race to watch. But I hope it happens in the 200 breasts. I think that's her best shot. Um, it's going to be awesome. So that wraps it up for this video. We will be back in just a moment with the men's uh, preview. That might have been a little bit long, but we can shorten it down next time.